Yes, sir. So how are you all doing? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. And today I'll be discussing five players who need to simply leave Leicester City this from a transfer window. So with the loan list at King Power Stadium continuing to grow and a large number of Deadwood currently lying in the first team squad, it's looking highly likely that the team heading into the upcoming Premier League season is going to be extremely big, making it very difficult for Brendan Rodgers and his staff to manage. Obviously, they have to get it down to a 25-man squad for the Premier League season and that means they're going to have to offload quite a few players head heading into the season, making it very difficult for Brendan Rodgers and his staff to make those crucial decisions. But with that being said, of course, with the possibility of Champions League football returning to the King Power Stadium for the up and coming season, obviously a large squad is required for Leicester City to compete successfully in either Premier League and Champions League campaigns. But realistically, also the players out alone and some of the players who are simply not getting into first team really up to the Champions League standard, probably not. So today I'm going to run through five players who Leicester City simply need to sell this summer transfer window through the rage bill and we can also reinvest some of the money earned from those players into some more experienced players who of course can help us in the Champions League campaign next season. But just before we get into it, make sure a big thumbs up down below on today's video. If you could to enjoy this different type of video on the channel, I know it is a bit different than usual, but if you do go on to enjoy it, make sure you drop a like down below on today's video. While you're down there, make sure you subscribe to my face on your screen before we are so, so close to 1K. So if you are new around here, make sure you subscribe because it will, it will be much, much appreciated. Also subscribe to my new group channel, The Full 90. There'll be other football content on there. So yeah, there'll be links to that in the description down below. Turn on my channel post notifications so you never miss any future videos on the channel just like this one. Follow all my social medias, they'll be down there. Links to all them will also be in the description down below. And let me know your thoughts on today's video in the comment section down below. Do you think we should sell any other players in this transfer window? Just let me know in the comment section down below. But let's quit the waffling and let's get into five players Leicester City should sell this summer transfer window. So starting off with player number one, Islam Slomani. So the Algerian international arrived at the King Power Stadium in the summer transfer window of 2016 for a record at the time of £28 million. The first 21 year old currently plays his football out on loan at AS Monaco. He also had two loan spells before that where he went to Fenerbahce and Newcastle United after he left Leicester City to go out on loan in the January transfer window of 2018. In his time at Leicester City he played 35 games for the club and he only scored 8 goals which isn't very good. For a striker, I thought he was pretty good in his first season for the Foxes. He, he started most games alongside Jamie Vardy under Claudio Ranieri. He didn't really get into the team under Craig Shakespeare in that season. I thought he performed fairly well in our Champions League campaign that season, but in the next season, he didn't really cut it. Of course, Jamie Vardy is always going to be a difficult man to replace, and the likes of Shinji Okazaki still in the squad. It was always going to be an upward task for the Algerian international. Looking at his other loan spells, of course, first of all, he went out on loan to Newcastle United in the Premier League. He only played four games for the Magpies and scored zero goals. Moving on to Fenerbahce, he played 15 games for them and only scored one, which, you know, isn't really the greatest. However, for Monaco, it has improved. He's played 18 games for them and scored nine goals, which I guess is a bit more respectable in Ligue 1. If you go on to look at his style of play, he's a 6 foot 2 striker, very good in the air, likes to ball from crosses, etc. Basically what Leicester City need, but for some reason we just keep learning him out, which doesn't really make any sense. But in all seriousness, Islam Slomani can literally just head the ball. He's, he's, he's not very fast, he's pretty. he's got poor control with the ball, and to be honest, he doesn't offer much more than smashing it into the box, and I guess hoping that Islam can score a goal from it. So to be honest, He's not the best striker, obviously in, the, in modern day football he really isn't suited to it, of course you need the pace getting him behind and Islam Samadhi just doesn't really offer that. But of course Islam Samadhi would be good if we were late on losing the game for example to Burnley, if they were sitting back we needed to get the ball into the box. Samadhi would be the perfect person to come on, maybe score a goal from header etc but that's really the only thing he offers in his style of play to be honest. If we look at the current Leicester City squad, would Slomani even get into the squad? Probably not. Of course, Jamie Vardy's always going to be the main striker. And of course, Kelechi and that show has been outstanding this season. So, to be perfectly honest, Slomani probably he just wouldn't get into the squad. And he, probably, he just wouldn't get his chance. So, that is the main reason why he probably should leave. He's just not going to get into the squad. And to be honest, if you keep learning him out, it's just not going to do Leicester or him the best. Brendan Rodgers has also said that he doesn't really have any plans for Islam Slomani going forward. So, I think that really sums up. I think Islam Slomani should leave Leicester. I think we get a decent decent prize for him, they could feel that it free at the wage bill and I think it would do the best for Islam Samani's career and for Leicester City as well going forward. Of course, if you do go on to sell Islam Samani, I will be looking at around 10 to 15 million pounds for the Algerian international. Of course, he is an international player. He does have the experience and 
we could get some decent money for him depending on where he goes. So I think we could get around 10 million for the Algerian international. But, but I honestly think the best thing would, would be for him to leave Leicester City. And that is probably the main reason. Of course, Brennan Rodgers has no plans for him. And there's no point in him staying at the club. And if, if he keep learning him out, there's no point for Leicester to do it. So that is probably the main reason why someone should be sold this summer for Leicester City. So now moving on to player number two, Adrian Silva. So the Portuguese international arrived at the King Power Stadium in 2017, but he didn't actually get to play until 2018 because somehow we signed him 14 seconds late, which doesn't make any sense. But he arrived for £22 million. He came with a big reputation of Portuguese international. To be honest, most Leicester fans thought he would start straight into midfield. And I think, uh, to be honest, I thought it would be a brilliant signing and it didn't really turn out that way, did it? So he's only really played a season at Leicester, he played the back end of the 2018 season and he also stayed for the first half of the 2019 season on the club as well and then of course he left in the January transfer window of 2019 to Monaco where he's played the last two seasons in, L in Ligue 1 just like Islam Slomani. At Monaco in his first season he only played 15 games, got zero goals and in, and in his second spell at Monaco he played 22 games and also scored zero goals. I know goals isn't always the best thing for midfielders, it's not the most important but if you look at those stats I don't, think, I don't think he's really done too much in a Monaco shirt to be perfectly honest. In his first season at Leicester City in the back end of the 2018 season under the club well, he looked to be a decent player sometimes but a very very inconsistent player. He looked good towards the end of the season but in some games he looked very awful. He, I don't think he could have kept, kept up to the flow of English football. Obviously coming from Portugal it's a much more slower paced football out there. Kind of Spanish type of football but moving to the Premier League I think it shocked him with the sheer pace of it. Obviously it's much more aggressive in the Premier League and I think Silva just, just struggled to get used to the flow and the, and the demand especially in the midfield in the Premier League team. If you're going to look at actually his style of play as a box-to-box -box midfielder, likes to operate in the same sort of role as Yuri Tillemans, likes to pick up the ball, make things happen, start the attacks. But to be honest, at Leicester, he just didn't really show that. He looked very inconsistent, but he showed it at Portugal at the, at the international level. He's a good player, but at Leicester, he just didn't really cut it. Of course, with his style of play, we've already got players in the squad who can do that type of thing, such as Yuri Tillemans and Dennis Pratt. So I don't think he'd really get aim with his style of play at Leicester. And I think the best thing for him would just be for Silva to leave Leicester this summer. So if we did go to sell Adrian Silva, I think we could get about five to ten million pounds for the Portuguese international. Obviously, he's just not hitting the levels anymore. Obviously, he's a, he's a good player. He's got a good reputation, good experienced player at the international level. But currently at Monaco, as we see, he's just not cutting it. And we, and we saw that at Leicester as well. So I think the future is not looking too good for Adrian Silva. So if he was going to leave the King Power Stadium, I think it would be about five to ten million. I don't think we, we could get too much for Adrian Silva, and that would be a big loss from his twenty-two million pound transfer fee. So I think the best thing for him will be to leave Leicester City this summer transfer window. So moving on to player number three, Rashid Gazelle. So the Algerian international arrived at the King Power Stadium in 2018 for a fee of £12.6 million where he paid one season for the club under Claude Puel and Brendan Rodgers and then this season he got sent out to Italy where he now plays his football at Florentina for the re remainder of this season. For the Foxes he's played 19 games and he's only scored one goal for Florentina. He's only played eight games this season which is a big concern for him. Obviously he's, he's gone on, out on loan there and he just hasn't really got given the chance. He scored zero goals out on loan there so the future is looking bleak for, for Rashid Gazelle. Obviously he arrived at the King Power Stadium we thought he could be a possible Riyad Mahrez replacement but he really hasn't came with that. His only goal came in the Carabao Cup win against Fleetwood Town and without that he just didn't really perform under Brendan Rodgers he didn't really get a chance either so to be honest I don't think Rashid Gazelle really has a future in a Leicester shirt. If you go to look at his style of play the 28 year old is a right winger likes to operate in the same sort of role as Riyad Mahrez when he came before it could be the possible Riyad Mahrez connection obviously the Algerian international it could have been the perfect dream but obviously it didn't really happen so he's, he likes to do the same as Riyad Mahrez but obviously he's not as good he likes to cut in on his left foot sometimes he's a winger which uh, to be honest I thought he could do something he's quite a skillful winger but with his end products he just didn't really have it most Leicester players saying he's a very very skillful winger but in games he hasn't really shown that and to be honest his link up play and stuff just didn't I don't think he's just I don't I don't know the problem with Gazelle he just didn't seem to be in the game too much he seemed to go in and out and didn't really make an impact on things and especially on the Brendan Rodgers he barely even got a chance if you look at the players currently in the Leicester City squad at right, of course, we have Harvey Barnes, DeMar Gray, who is a Paris, who are the main wide players. And will Rashi Gazelle get into that? Probably not. I think DeMar Gray is better than Gazelle. So if, if you're better than DeMar Gray, it's probably best for you to go. So I don't think he would even get in. And as possible, this has been, it's been heavily linked that Leicester are going to be signing a winger in the summer transfer window as well. So to be honest, Rashi Gazelle is looking very, very similar. He will even be given a chance at Leicester City ever again. 
If you did go to sell Rashi Gazelle this summer transfer window, same as Adrian Silva, I think we could get about five to ten million. Obviously, it arrived for twelve million, so it isn't the biggest of losses. But to be honest, Rashi Gazelle, I think his career has been heavily damaged coming to Leicester City. I just think the English game just didn't really suit him. I think it'd be better for him to go maybe back out to France. Obviously, I wouldn't expect him to stay at Florentina because he's just not given a chance there. So I'll say around five to ten million for Rashi Gazelle. Obviously, he's still young at twenty-eight. He's around at his prime right now. But I think if he can move somewhere else, he could rescue his career. But yeah, I, don't, I just don't think he has a future at Leicester. Of course, the players we have now, he's just not going to cut it. And Brendan Rodgers is just doesn't look like he's going to be interested in using him. So yeah, that is the main reason why Rashi Gazem should leave Leicester City this summer. So moving on to player number four, Damari Gray. So the English international arrived from Birmingham City in the January transfer window of 2016 for a fee of £4.5 million. Pounds. He's currently only 23, which is my only concern with selling Damari Gray, but he stayed at Leicester City for those four years and he's been very in and out of the squad, very inconsistent. He's sure to get a good run of form going out wide, but it's a difficult one for me with Damari Gray. He's a good player, but to be honest, especially this season, just haven't really cut it in a Leicester shirt. Obviously, he's only a young winger. He arrived at the club very young at 19 years old, but he's played 120. 25 games for the Fox and only scored nine goals, which is absolutely atrocious. To be honest, I thought I could do better. I know he is a winger, but he needs to be scoring at least about 30 goals, I would say. Obviously, he's a young talent. He's still got his prime to come, but I think Demario Gray needs to score more. If he's out wide, and we need someone out wide who can finish, you can have end product. He can do the running, but his end product is just not there with Demario Gray. And he's, I think, to be honest, this season, I think he's been trying too hard, to be honest, with Demario Gray. So I think it's probably the best thing for him will be to leave Leicester. The fans are getting on his back now. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one with Demario Gray, but I just think his end product's just not there. I and mean, with the likes of Harvey Barnes performing really well this season and the Yosey Perez, I just don't think Demario Gray will, will, will get a good chance under Brendan Rodgers if Brendan Rodgers stays at Leicester City. If you go to look at Demario Gray's style of play, he's a winger, a fast winger. He's good, he has good skill, but to be honest, the only thing with Demario Gray is his end product, which is the only problem, probably the most important thing. He's got the pace, he's got the skill, especially in his first season. He's a brilliant super sub, I'll give you that, but as soon as he starts, he just doesn't have the same pace or anything, and he just doesn't seem to get into the game. He's very, very inconsistent, which is the frustrating thing. One game is absolutely insane, and then you start him next week, and he's absolutely awful. That is the problem, and I think Brendan Rodgers is just a bit fed up for that. This season, he came with a bench, did well. Next game starts him off wide. It's a difficult one, Demario Gray. He's probably the most inconsistent player I've ever seen. He has flashes of absolute brilliance, and then sometimes he's just, he's just very in and out of the game. And it's just a difficult one to mark with Demario Gray. And I think the players we have now, with the likes of Harvey Barnes and Yuzi Perez out wide, I think it's going to find it very difficult to get into the lesser side. So if you did go on to sell Demario Gray, of course, he is a youngster, an English international, which is always going to boost the price up. Some Premier League clubs are interested in him, I think Bournemouth are interested with him. So if you are going to sell him, I think we could get around 15 to 20 million. Of course, with, with, with him being young and English international, it's always going to boost the price up. So it's a difficult one with Demario Gray. We could, we, we could really regret this he could turn out to be a brilliant winger but at the moment he's just not cut it, cutting it in a Leicester shirt and I think the best thing for him will be to go out to another Premier League or Championship club where he can get regular game time and then we can see the real Damari Gray and see what it's like possibly we could learn him out and then see but I think Damari Gray just needs to go for his career sake and for Leicester he's on a high wage and he's just not really getting into the squad at the moment I think we can sell him reinvest that money into a much more experienced winger who can of course help us in our Champions League campaign possibly next season but Damari Gray it's a difficult one I put it on my Instagram and lots of you guys requested it so that's why I'm putting it in the video but yeah that is the reasons why Damari Gray should leave Leicester City in the upper corner transfer window so finally moving on to player number five Matthew James so the English international arrived from the Manchester United youth system in 2012 where he spent the remainder of his career at Leicester apart from a short loan spell in 2017 where he went out on them to Barnsley where he played some football there but he didn't really get the game time there but he's been through all of Leicester, he's played 101 games for the Foxes, four goals which isn't the most important thing but he's an absolute Leicester legend is Matthew James but I think his time up at the club is coming to an end. If you're going to look at his style of play he's another box to box type of midfielder, can also do a defensive role, he played in that role against Liverpool this season in the Premier League where um, yeah, we lost four we just not talk about that one but yeah obviously is he realistically realistic gonna get into the squad probably not he's been struck with injuries over the year which has really damaged his career I think he got injured in the great escape season where he was in the squad and he was brilliant that season but uh, it's a disappointing thing he could be a good midfielder but injuries have just ruined his career really so yeah I think it's, it's time for Leicester is coming to an end for Matty James 
Of course, the Leicester midfield is packed out with players. We've got lots of Dennis Pratt, Yuri Tinnemans, who are already in that box box role. Of course, he, he can do a defensive job. I've already got Wilfred and Diddy and Hamza Chalji in that role. So, is he gonna is he gonna get into the squad? Probably not. As my James, and I think the best thing for him, if he wants to stay at Leicester, like I said, he can. He can retire at Leicester. I'll be happy with that. Obviously, he's a Leicester legend. But I think the best thing for him will be to leave to maybe a Championship or League One team, get some regular football to end off his career. So, if you were gonna go on to sell Matty James, of course, a 28 year old. I know he's at his peak, 28, he's very young, but I just don't think he has anything left in him. Obviously, his injuries have basically ruined his whole career. So, if you were going to sell him, I would say we get about one to five million for him. Obviously, he could do something good if he goes out to maybe a championship club. He could still perform, 28 years old, he's still got a bit of a chance. But for me, the injuries have just ruined his career and he hasn't really got any consistent football flow. And I think it would be difficult for him to get back into that. He could get another injury again. He's a very injury-prone player. So, yeah, that is the main reasons why I think Matt James should leave Leicester City this summer transfer window. So the boys and girls, that is it for today's video. Five players less as you should sell this summer transfer window. If you did go on to enjoy it, make sure you drop a like. If you want to see some more videos just like this one with a five player type of thing, make sure you drop a like down below. Make sure you let me know in the comment sections down below. Did you agree with my de decisions? Did you not? Just let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. We're so, so close to 1k. So subscribe if you are new around here, boys. But yeah, that is it for today's video. I'll be sports, and I'll see you all in my next video. Peace. Out. Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my.